All right, we are back. This is continuing coverage of the 2022 Casuals Tournament, uh, Saturday, week three. This will be coverage of the two team games, games six through ten. Uh, once again, I'm joined by Walter White. Uh, he already introduced himself in the last video, so let's just go on ahead with this. Um, this will be Keep Across the River, Capture the Flag. Uh, hi! So we have Team Wings with Father Xmas, Meerkat, General Pepper, Glassjaw, and Scratch against uh, the Tax Evaders, Overdose, Bridgestone, Crypto, Spy, and Walter White. Overdose claims that perhaps his team is composed of fools, um, you know, which may or may not be true. I certainly think that some of them may qualify for that term. Uh, others maybe not so much. Um, one thing to notice is that it is a six on five game. So um, from a number of players perspective, uh, Team Wings has sort of an, an inherent advantage. Um, so that's one thing to keep track of. However, However they do have Father Xmas, so, you know, he doesn't like to attack. That is true. One thing you'll notice if you play with him is he does tend to be a bit passive and he does tend to steal free-for-all victories uh, in very cowardly manners, as exemplified by Game 1 of the previous video. Um, so it seems like Overdose, he's deciding to give the Trow to Cryptos, giving Walter White some fetch, um, giving Spy the other four fetch, Bridgestone... Uh, some, me some melee units. One of the things that I think I, I really enjoy about your captaining is your kind of uh, ability to distribute. And I think that that's an important thing for captains to learn. What uh, what goes through your head as a captain when you're just thrown into it? You don't know who your team is in a situation like this. So, like, what do you do? Who, who are you supposed to give units to? What units do you get? How do you learn? Well, my thought process is give the most powerful units to the guy who, if he messes up, you can just blame him, you know, guilt-free. And so that's why I gave the Trout to Kryptos, because if he were to mess up and lose all of his Trout for whatever reason, I would not hesitate to sort of pin this entire loss. You know, assuming we lose the Trout, we lose the game. Uh, I would have no hesitation pinning the loss on Mr. Kryptos. Um... Whereas I might. And then I guess, is that like a kind of a cascade effect where you'd say like the next best unit might be fetch? So you distribute those again accordingly until you kind of are down to where, all right, well, here are some units like we can lose, but we might not lose the game if, you know, like someone that uh, might be AFK or, or, or prone to go AFK or something like that takes them. Yeah, I actually learned that from. Um... From the legendary player Karma, um, you know, hit the way he distributes units is he gives units based off how much he trusts people rather than skill. And, you know, sort of on the lower end of the spectrum, he gives units to like, you know, if they die, they don't really have any impact on the game anyway, so it doesn't matter. And, um, you know, of course, that, you know, really you know, means that, well, I don't know what I'm trying to say. Basically, just, and this is only regarding, you know, good captaining strategies. Yeah. Um, anyway. You do want to win a game, even if it's casual. Like, uh, I think the game is, isn't is fun, or it becomes less fun if you lose all the time. So even in casual games, you want to win. So having a captain that is uh, going to help you do that. It's always uh, an advantage, a fun thing. Yeah, let me let me quickly go through the unit trades here. So, uh, the uh, the Trow are being controlled by General Pepper, who actually has thirty five percent of Team Tight Sight. The Fetchers, Father Xmas, and Wings, um, and Scratch. So actually, they split the fetch three ways, which is uh, interesting. And then. Um, yeah, Meerkat and Glassjaw, both with 7%. Based off Glassjaw's 
uh, you know, dominant performance, you know, perhaps helping Bridgestone get um, get that victory in the, in the Dead Man's Float game, it's kind of interesting to see him with only 7% of the units. Um, I would agree, yeah. That tends to be... Uh, Glassjaw has really proven himself quite a bit. Um, I think in in the other video we had gone through, you know, some of uh, even just general funky wonky points as, as they, they stand and everything, and Glassjaw has actually proven himself to be quite quite the player, and um, if that yeah, white it's, it's sad to see him with only 7%. Throw. Um, yeah, so now Spies Fetch are getting to work, um, getting rushed, Scratch is rushing these Fetch with his Berserks, they're getting blasted. Meanwhile, Walter White is defending. Um, it looks like Spy might lose a... F yeah, he loses one fetch, maybe two. Uh, no, okay. And, you know, good defense by Walter White preventing these fetch from supporting those Zerks. Um, there is a mad rush to the flag. Which, although it, it seems like uh, they, they believe it's possible, this is not something that's going to be possible to take. They, they could take out some of those dwarves and, and maybe get some free kills. So at the end of the game, their damage is going to look a little bit better. But that's, that's not helping their team as much as uh, was needed for middle. And I think Overdose's team knows that. So at this, t this point, Overdose's team knows they can... Pretty much just send a calculated amount at those Trow and and, uh, and Spy and Walter White. It will just kind of help clean up the middle. One thing to notice is that if this J-Man gets blasted, it will cancel out Team Tightsight's ability to, uh, yep, there he goes, to uh, heal their Trow, which if you noticed, there is an, a, a very, very orange Trow. What are the fetch doing in the middle, though? Yeah, I saw that. That would be very helpful. Like, yeah, you need to heal that prowl, but what, the fetch are, are fishing, it looks like. So, so they see, like, a little arc of electricity, and so they knew there were whites in the water. Yeah, Spy killed one of those whites. It looks like Wings was able to flank. Maybe maybe he walked all the way around? I, I, I don't know. Or maybe he just crossed here. I'm not sure what happened, but... Um... Walter does an interesting thing. He runs a uh, a melee unit in, but that essentially causes the uh, artillery to make the choice: Do I want to get hacked and die, or do I want to try to shoot and live to die? But it essentially uh, protects the health of uh, the entire team's artillery by sacrificing one unit, kind of running in if you can. But yeah, more importantly. The purple team, they lost their second J-Man, uh, and I think they lost a Trow. So, you know, they have a huge deficit in terms of the power units, uh, again, because these Trow cannot heal themselves, whereas uh, we still have a J-Man back at the home base. Um, and well, so I think, if I recall on voice, you, you had uh, initially said, like, Oh, I got a J-Man, what was I thinking? But I, I think you knew that you you knew what you were thinking when you were trading. And I think that um Yeah, no, the uh the J Man can be a really just like the the change of force. Like can you imagine if the the uh we had three low health um what would you call these? Uh seafoam <laughs> colored Pro versus uh, two full health pro uh, would just be a game changer. It absolutely would. Um, yeah, so it seems at this point that Team Overdose is really taking the initiative. They are um, trying to surround Team Tight Sight. Uh, the sort of force waiting for the fetch to show up. Contested. Crypto's trying to wreak havoc. Uh, he does have a three on two trow advantage, so I'm not really sure why he's not going on a kicking spree here. Uh, okay, there he goes. 
these zerks could also move up. Um, yeah, but they'll get blasted. There we go. Okay, so now we see the, uh, the offense going down. Cryptos is able to stone both of the trail. And uh, yeah, this isn't this isn't gonna go well for Team Purple. Overdose sneaking in at a Myrmidon to take the flag. And that is an abrupt end to that game. So Cryptos leads the pack with 98 damage, obviously. He was the guy who had all three of the trow. He did plenty of kicking in that game. He killed both of the um at least two of the um of General Pepper's trow. Uh, Walter White with some nice numbers with the fetch, you know, again, protecting Spice fetch when, uh, when back in this middle area when, who was it, Scratch might have rushed with some Zerks or something. Um, and then, um, yeah, so it was a good effort. Um, anything that you'd like to add? I think General Pepper needs a, a shout out on, I always think that, you know, you, you need to um, give some call outs to, you know, players that may not have been on the, the team that won, but but gave a great effort. And I think that General Pepper seemed to uh, really contribute very well to his team. So um, shout out to General Pepper there. Of course, this is the same General Pepper who defeated Overdose in last year's Casuals Only Reg Tournament. He is so casual this year that he's barely even showing up to the games. Um, so that's just I think he may be even be eliminated. Yeah, I think he was eliminated pretty early uh, since he basically didn't show up. But, um, yeah, it's always good to see him. And um, yeah. He has a baby, so he claims. We put that in quotes baby. Yeah, right. Uh, yeah. Um, so, game seven Green Divide. Assassin. Uh, let's just jump into this. All right, so this is that map where, um, by popular demand, we uh, got some forest giants here. Uh, we have Walter White, Cryptos, Overdose, Bridgestone, and Scratch against Spy, Father Xmas, Glassjaw, Wings, and Meerkat. So um, I'm not exactly who it was, but somebody left. And so now it is five on five. And um, if you'll notice, the assassin targets are these uh, these statues. There are three on each side. One, two, three. And uh, so this is basically a clone of a different map called the Dark Canyon, um, just with a lot more grass on it. Uh, but it's the same the same sort of terrain and all of that. Um, and unfortunately, uh, well, we we love Spy. This is not his map. He's never really seen it before. And his capping, uh, doing captaining. And so it seems like Father Xmas is trying to basically give him a trade so that uh, he can succeed. Whether or not that's the, the best thing to do, I think that Sometimes it's better to to let a player that says uh, seasoned as spy to, to to pick his own units because I think sometimes um, if you tell him what to get, he distributes in a in you know he, he needs to be told specifically distribution and I think it's almost better to just say just do it you know and, and kind of get your get your pants wet so. Yeah, I mean, It'll be I, interesting I think, to see. I think Spy in general is a very disgusting human being, but to his credit, he also does have good myth instincts. And so sometimes, you know, if if you're being told what to do, you don't you don't get those those um, myth two instincts, which I think he does have. And so he probably could have come up with a decent trade uh, without any input from Father Xmas, but. Um, you know, and with that said, I'd say I've lost more times when I've told Spy what to trade for than when I just tell him, just get what you think and do it. So, yeah, so Spy, if you, if you need any encouragement, you know, just do what you do, man. Yep. Um, okay, so it, it appears as though we actually have some pretty similar trades. 
Um, yeah, I mean, what's this? Father Xmas uh, just followed what you've done in the past. He only watches your films. I, that, that's only what he's told me, right? That's I'm not sure. <laughs> um, and yeah. so Walter White does just, not have any Stygian Knights, whereas Spy's team probably has yeah, maximum gone. Stygian Knights uh, in favor of fewer souls. Uh, those are those are sort of the, the major differences I see. Uh, apart from that, it's really um, kind of an identical trade. Um, we see Cryptos with the Forest Giants for Team Walter White, um, Father Xmas and Spy, each with a Father uh, with, with each with a Forest Giant, um, Spy, not moving his for whatever reason, whereas whereas Walter White's army is moving as if they have a plan. Um, so, and so uh, it looks like uh, Kryptos is uh, is rushing. So if you follow the Spider Queens of Team Walter White, uh, it seems like Kryptos was given the Spider Queens and the Forest Giants. And uh, Kryptos has proven his valor time and time again. So, you know, we, we want to give him credit where it's due. And, uh, and here he goes. But at the same time, we, we do need to see other pressure from other players. So, and not many even seasoned players know what the Spider Queen does. So this will be interesting to see. Yeah, so Crypto is really just right off the bat losing a Forest Giant, not really inflicting any damage. However, his Mercury And losing or, all, his all Spider Queens. Or, Sorry. The, his Mercurti are going to almost kill a target. Um, now, Overdose's Soulless are able to uh, kill some of these Spider Queens. I think he should be targeting the Forest Giant rather than... This, well, I mean, the Spider Queens are all terrain, so it might be important to kill. But, um, yeah, now Overdose is getting to uh, killing these... You know, he's almost with two volleys of arrows almost freezing there he goes he kills that entire uh forest giant right there what did you think of my strategy to do that many solas all to one player um i don't know i mean it it, it just so happens that you know it worked out in our favor but in but it's map. also on this map and and map with this we see even you blasting a bunch of my solas away uh, so I mean, I you know it it's it's debatable because typically you don't want to get so many solas on like a fetch map, right? But um, you know, well, not on one like this though. Um, and I think we got max fetch already, and so it was kind of a, a matter of how do you want to distribute the rest of the units? And we see more so able to completely demolish the second forest giant. And so if, uh, if you do get someone that you, you feel can competently run Solus, I, uh, I advise doing, you know, maybe a, a more heavy Solus approach. But for this, it, um, it certainly was a gamble, but, um, but I think it, it proved very effective. Well, we have this huge pack of spiders coming after Overdose's uh, Solus. And no one is seeming to protect him. That's a great shot. Oh, losing the one Solus, I always wonder about those. You know, like, do you shoot a little farther and... Uh, and keep that Solus alive, but he's going to get bit anyways, or, you know, you kill it and just make sure that the Solus get a little farther away to where they can, you know, start potentially even shooting on their own. This is also a, a nice move um, where uh, Fetch get the ability to kind of blast the, the fireballs, so... They can uh, they can really basically have the the advantage. So 
on any map that you trade, if you had to choose fetch or warlock, you always choose fetch. This fetch will always beat a warlock at the end of it. See a melee fight going on here. Well, that was actually pretty close. Yeah, spiders can get eaten alive by certain units, and so you got to be careful how you fight those battles, but spiders do a lot of damage, but they take a lot of damage easy, so that was, uh, that was fun to see. Now, this is a hard thing. So uh, Spy's team actually spreads out very effectively. This is a really good spread for them. Um... The soul waiters are in a tight spot. You know, they, they can't, they don't have much room to do anything. Why, why did you decide to keep two fetch back and one fetch forward? I was kind of, the one fetch was to shoot the lock shot, essentially. So you kind of look at what the lock's mana is and where it's at. And so you, you uh, sometimes like offsetting a shot is better than getting damage, uh, because it takes them like what ten to fifteen seconds to get another shot off, and sometimes that can be the advantage that you need your solace to get. So sometimes, although these are really critical units that you want to keep alive, it's better to almost sacrifice them to to get. Your, your higher priority units, which right now are Solus, which can travel more of the map, can do more damage, and right now can take out fetch from a wide range. So the Solus on this map are such a kind of critical unit. They're almost the best. And a lot of times players are given Solus and they think, ah, oh, well, you gave me the shit unit. No, we gave you one of the best units. And... Uh, it's only shit if you let them die. And uh, Overdose is not one of those players that lets them die. So uh, he was given a very critical role and did well with it. Well, you can make the argument that to a certain degree, everybody plays a critical role. I mean, no matter what kind of units you have, if, if you die, it's not good. Um, you know, these well, no, but, well, in non-casual games, I think that players are sometimes given like two thrall. Like, oh, I, I distributed units to you. Yeah, you watched the flag, buddy. Have fun. Yeah, well, I mean, speaking of two thrall, again, you know, we saw we saw Glassjaw last game with 7% of the units. Um, we see him now with nothing. Um, you know, do you think that he could have been reinforced with some units? But even if he did get some units, what could he have done? Uh, who knows? But... Um... I mean, he appears to be question. he appears to be completely disheartened because now he's saying AFK BRB. Um, you know, he's basically taken himself out of this game, uh, possibly due to the fact that Spy is not giving him any any kind of reinforcements. Um, so who knows? But um, yeah, I mean, I I don't know why Team Walter White is taking so long to kill this target. Uh, it's been unoccupied for quite some time. It was so you could say your comments and uh, and give Glassjaw his his due. And now, um, now, uh, Team Walter White, if they wanted to, they could really just kind of back up. Um, and play defense. I don't know if that's what they're going to decide to do or not. But, um, you know, once the second statue is Five dead, that means the only way Team Spy can win is by killing all three of Team Walter White's targets. And um, that's a pretty tall order in the span of five minutes. Uh, even though. Well, and even having that first one down, as we know, the, the first person to get a target wins, you know? So even if you kill the other team's target and it's 1 1. The first team to kill wins, and so at this point, yeah, as you said, Hungry Hippos needs all three targets. So it just becomes a waiting game. Um, 
in a casuals tournament, it's sometimes like, well, is it more fun to just try to take all three rather than, you know, get the guaranteed victory? I think that that can come into it, but um, let's just kind of see how how we decide because, you know, uh, with four minutes left, I hate when myth the wait wait people time, you know, because if it just is a matter of falling back, that can also be. If the other team is not being aggressive, it can waste everyone's time. So we'll see. Overdose calling just D. So we might have a very dry next three minutes, three and a half minutes. Not really sure. Um, yeah, with the percentages so close, I think uh, Walter White and Overdose are, although they're casual players, they. Uh, they like to see Father Xmas a guaranteed loss, so. Well, at least I would say Overdose does. I mean, if there was, one, by if the there was one player <laughs> that I would enjoy watching them lose every single game, it would actually be Cryptos. But since he's he's on our team... Um, There's not much you can do. Not yeah. much we can do, yeah, except suicide, but of course... I well, would... you gave him the Forest Giants to, to suicide, so... That was no, nice. That, that was you, man. You're the captain. I didn't do anything, but Oh, that's right, yeah. That's true. But yeah, crypto really... I think that the game before you had done something like that where you'd given him the the throw, so I'm like, well, if that's the the effort of the game, then then I'll I'll do that. But also with this, this comes down to more of a uh, a fetch soulless battle. And uh, I think the Spider Queens in general, uh, when when we had thought about this in retrospect, the Spider Queens could be a, a crazy change of pace. So I, I think that in a non-casuals game, you would tend to split your units a lot differently. You'd probably split uh, more four ways on this. So not even a three-prong approach, but like a four-prong approach if you had eight players per team. Or so, well, you know, that's pretty tough too. So with even four players per team, I guess you could do it. It's just a matter of trusting who you have. So I think um, with these players, it's better to kind of take a a more central approach to, to things. Um go heavy on a single target try to get it as soon as you can and uh and see where you're at but but teams that know how to defend some of these targets quickly are, are going to catch you on it so these are these are fun kind of tries but this is uh this is one of the more advanced maps and it's good to get everyone's feet wet a bit Yep, so uh, once again, Spy needs to kill both this target and this target with 45 seconds left. Um, it's not looking like he's going to be able to do it. And I think that it's sort of a foregone conclusion that despite being down by 7%, uh, Team Walter White is going to escape with the victory. Remaining. Yeah, so I would say that maybe um, the the best drawn conclusion of this is, and it's it's true for all these team games, is really kind of uh, if you're having the captain uh, and you don't exactly know the trade, try to see if anyone's willing to help. But if not, then kind of go for it and uh, and see who your players are and give give units away to uh, to players that if uh, if if you lose, it's their fault, not yours. <laughs> yeah, exactly. So, you know, Kryptos, it appears as though he tried his hardest to actually throw the game uh, by losing his Forest Giants and his Spider Queens so early on. Um, but through some heroic 
acts from overdose, you know, being able to kill both of the opposing forest giants, you know, it kind of evened things up. And then, um, you know, some, some good fetching from Walter White, you know, we were able to get, we were able to get the second target and then basically just lie back and, uh, wait for the game to expire. Bridgestone tired with negative 10 damage. I'm not sure how that's possible. I don't, you know, I don't think there are any whites or, um, or anything on a like flag that. rally game though he would have really showed up so don't uh <laughs> i'm being facetious but uh yeah we we don't exactly know what happened there bridgestone but good try yeah um yeah it's, it's interesting to note uh but uh wings the only player to reach triple digits in the game um i i remember father xmas and spy had the forest giants so wings maybe had a group of fetch or um that may have contributed to bridges uh negative 10 we don't yeah. know yeah, so it would be fun to uh for players that have the ability go to gate of storms slash games and uh and check out how wings uh did what he did but yeah it's not, we're not gonna know because uh, we're trucking on here. This is now Flag Rally, another Flag Rally game. Acts of Piety. Here we go. And again, Overdose is the randomly selected captain um, with Father Xmas, Cryptos, Bridgestone Tired, and Meerkat going up against Prestige Worldwide, Glassjaw, Scratch, Spy, Wings, and Walter White. So this is one of the... Uh, one of the first light maps I remember playing. I mean, you know, keep was keep is was dark. Um, what was the second game? I uh, you know I I wish I were paying more attention, but oh. uh, okay. well, the last was the last game the second game. I don't know. Um, I think it was. So that okay, would have so been green, the green divide, green divide or, or kind of. I I mean, it was a forest giant map. So you know, this is a. This is a light map, no giant units, you know, very, very sort of light unit heavy. Um, and uh, we'll see how it turns out. Um, we see Overdose completing his trade, um, going for two squads of six archers, some dwarves, herons, a bunch of warriors, and some puskulls. Um, you know, I, with a unit set like this, uh, by far, again, the most important units are going to be these Heron guards. Um, so he decides to give them to his trusty lieutenants, Father Xmas and Kryptos. Um, we'll have to see if that was a good decision or not. On the other side, we see a, a um, you know, pretty similar trade, I would say. Um, you know, there aren't really any any archers um and we see what may be maximum goals i think i see 18 goals um you know of course max herons and um maybe maximum warriors not sure so this appears to be kind of a rush squad here um whereas overdose i think one of the things that i have to give uh, glassjaw a lot of credit for is uh he has really stepped up quite a bit as a as a captain and um and has come up with some pretty am amazing and, and great quick strats and he can analyze a situation pretty well and um and so it will be kind of fun to see the way that he plays this out yeah and that is why he has um double digit lives and he's still despite missing last weekend's games very much in the uh in the running uh, we see over. We can see some of his map. ideas here on the uh, in his chat as well. Sorry, there's uh, overdose strong on the map, but then there's chat yeah. for Glassjaw, kind of telling people where to go, what to do. Game on. Yeah. Okay, so both both overdose and Glassjaw appear to be uh, communicating to their to their uh, lieutenants and subordinates what to do. Uh, it'll really just come down to the execution of. Um, the teammates and uh, I think Kryptos is being instructed to go west. Father Xmas going south. Flag capture. Um, 
Bridgestone and Meerkat going captured. middle. Meanwhile, Glassjaw is hoping that they have a lot of archers mid. I think that's actually where I'm sending them. You know, despite me telling Meerkat to go to the middle, he is actually moving west Flag with captured. Kryptos, maybe. Maybe that was the better decision, but we don't know. It's hard to tell. But it yeah. uh, looks like Glassjaw getting a, some quick tags Flag captured. on uh, flags. Flag yeah, one thing captured. to notice is that uh, we had a bit of an accident in the backfield. Um, Bridgestone saying that he is sorry. He did uh, blow up one Flag of captured. Father Xmas's Heron guards. Uh, again, Ooh. of course, the Heron guard being the most important unit in this game... Again, we see Bridgestone tired uh, with an, perhaps an act of sabotage. Um, and so, Flag again, I, I go back to that last game, Green Flag Divide, captured. where he got minus 10 damage. Um, there, it could have been an attempt uh, at subterfuge or, or sabotage. Um, you know, you never know with uh, Bridgestone tired. He's an unpredictable Flag player captured. with a lot of grudges. Um, so, but yeah. is that okay in these casual games to do something like that? Uh, I mean, I certainly have my own grudges, um, Cryptos. But um, yeah, I mean, I think, um, you know, Flag casual captured. games are casual games for a reason. And, uh, you know, it's, it is what it is. And we're all just here to have a good time. And so something Flag like blowing captured. up your own hair on guards... It's not the uh, not the worst thing in the world. Not the worst Sunday afternoon that you can have, um, you know. When you uh, you look at uh, Glassjaw's team, they 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 seem just so laser focused, like they're SEAL Team Six. They they are surrounding and taking advantage of your team's discord. It's um, it's pretty great to see. Well, we see Father Xmas making a push for the for the West. Um, Meerkat is Flag pretty much going to get annihilated, I think. Um, you know, I don't know where... I, I told Bridgestone and Meerkat to go middle. One of them is in the middle. The other one is over here. So I'm not sure if they got the message. Flag and there captured. was also a very large force uh, north. Um, and that seemingly overwhelmed Kryptos. Yet he's still engaging. Um, I think he should have just pulled back. Um, overdose controlling the defense, not really doing much. But yeah, uh, bridge it seemed like maybe not Kryptos' best game there. Flag capture. Yeah, unfortunately. And, and who is running Yellow's forces up, up north? This would be um, who is this? Scratch Spy and, and Scratch. They're doing a, a great number. Yeah. Good to see Mr. Scratcher back. Great to see Spy getting his legs. Uh, I don't know. I mean, his legs are so strong from he he literally bikes over like 100 miles a day, it seems like. So uh, his legs aren't weak, but he might be tired when he plays sometimes. <laughs> Victory imminent. I mean, he always seems to be tired. Um, that's a, a foregone conclusion. Yeah, and so I, I think at this point, Kryptos should just abandon his warriors and just get these Heron guards to the home base. Um, you know, unfortunately, he's he's a bit boxed in. There doesn't appear to be any kind of help whatsoever because... Um, I think when you see an 80% to 50%, uh, it's, yeah. it's pretty all much... The, all the Work offense on. is really sort of at this southern area. Father Xmas went sort of unobstructed, um, but he's going to have a hard time grabbing this flag. So yeah, these dwarves need to stay alive if uh, Team Overdose has any chance of winning. I'm not but they sure. don't. I'm, I'm oh not yeah, sure. but you look at that... Just look at the overhead and the surrounding. It's um, it's impossible, you know. It's uh, well, I mean, 
we're, we're trying to cast these games. I, I don't know why you're sort of ruining the outcome of the no, game. No, I'm looking at the, the overhead map. It's uh, It seems impossible here. Uh, judging by the fact that uh, Glassjaw's team had completely surrounded flag number two. It's uh, it's the way that it is, you, you know? Yeah, well, you could have built up the suspense a little more. But anyway, so we see uh, 106 damage from Glassjaw, which was essentially just a, a bum rush um, from the north. And, um, you know, he, he typically just abandons the artillery units um and somehow winds up with a victory here so um yeah who knows uh cryptos given an entire flank only able to do nine damage unfortunately but uh again he was sort of double teamed by scratch and spy who who uh, proved to be a pretty lethal duo as they are the primary players who uh, were able to grab flag number two um so yeah, Game there you go. Over. I apologize to the the television audience, not to the online audience, only the television audience. For what? For giving away the ending. Oh, okay. Did someone? I don't know. Okay, yeah. Um. So, game number nine, Poison Holiday. Last man on the hill. Let's go. All right. So we have two teams, Spy, Bridgestone, Meerkat, Glass, Jaw, Walter White, with uh, also Team Scratch, Father Xmas, Cryptos, Overdose, and Wings. So the two, the two dominant factors in uh, the last game, Acts of Piety, are now going head-to-head -head in um, Poison Holiday, Last Man on the Hill, this is going to pretty much be a slugfest here. I mean, we've got a center island, you know, surrounded by water. Two armies. Um, is this a light map? Yeah. Um, and uh, it's going to be interesting, you know. I mean, I think, I think it's going to sort of be an artillery fight until the last, uh, last minute or so. And then everyone's just going to rush in and try and win the game. That's kind of how these things go. So. Yeah, it does kind of seem that that to be the case. Was there anything that you thought uh, either team should do particularly? Just up front or as a trade that you think could have benefited them? Uh, well, contrary to last game where it really just came down to a melee rush, I think this last man on the hill game is going to sort of be an artillery battle and so we see spy loading up on six warlocks um, you know probably about 20 16 to 20 archers uh, and then a bunch of thrall so um, you know this really plays into the strategy that I just talked about you know an artillery fight until the last minute and then everyone just rushes in um, you know similarly um, wing or dramatic sorry, difference actually I would say in in archers right isn't it twice the amount that the pink has to the purple? Yeah. Um, and instead, uh, Scratch has opted to get this huge pack of warriors here. Also, I think he got uh, two fewer warlocks. But uh, it still is sort of an artillery, an artillery heavy unit set. Um, definitely, definitely. But, yeah, I think it all comes down to kind of that slugfest. But will one team just go middle? Is there an advantage to flanking? I think, um, and will both teams flank? That's that's a, a really crucial thing, I think, for this is how does that play out on this map, do you think, with the flanks? Yeah, so one of the things to notice is that if you're going to flank, you're really going to have to commit because the access point is this this side or here on the left, on the right, we got here or here. And it really is, you, you really are going to have to detach Dang. yourself from the middle force if you want to flank. Um, and so it's going to require a commitment. But at the same time, if you can get around, 
and and position yourself well, then it could ob obviously do uh, a great amount of damage. So uh, we'll be on the lookout for that. Um, I don't think anyone is necessarily calling for a, a um, flank. Spy and Walter White going uh, all mid, apparently. Whereas Scratch's team appears to be going, well, Overdose appears to be going to the east. So again, Glass Jaw getting a little bit of the short end of the stick if we look at unit percentage at the beginning of the game. Yeah, and actually I think Spy might be undervaluing himself as well uh, with only 7%. I, I'm not exactly sure what units that those are. Uh, probably just a Warlock. You know, maybe... Probably just a Warlock. <laughs> Yeah. And maybe like a few melee or something. Like Warlock and a Puskull or something like that. Um, yeah. The distribution for Scratch's team is a bit more equitable. Father Xmas has a little more because yeah, I think he's he might be. Uh, oh no! It seems like everyone's everyone's going middle, except Overdose. Um, Meerkat actually, um, as as good as he is, I think even he would say maybe he shouldn't have the maximum percentage <laughs> of unit trade at the very beginning of the game. So, uh, well, To be fair, though, he might not even know how to type that he has too many units. That's fair. I think he's learned that. So. Yeah, yeah, we're just joking around here. Five um, minutes remaining. But yeah, we see um, Overdose doesn't really have any kind of resistance here. Glassjaw correctly points out they have a flank coming. Um, meanwhile, everyone is just sort of jammed up in the middle here. Now, do you think, uh, Walter, you and, you know, you should be calling for reinforcements? You know, you've got six warlocks and four of them are just sort of chilling back here uh meanwhile you're sort of on the front well, so i think that it's yeah i i feel like i have trouble typing like mid game so it's yes i think i should be but i don't have i think i'm focused again kind of on l let me kill but i think that that is a good point sometimes you can get more across because uh meerkat was actually following very specific directions here uh, about kind of move the uh, so so we got like a big thrall trade uh and so it was designed to be move your thrall slowly across the water and slowly push on them as you kind of shoot above but he it, uh i guess understood it as kind of stand back Flag. and so you don't see those thrall moving forward but you don't see those archers making any contact either. And so it's a, it's a hard situation. We saw a nice shot there from uh, somebody's archers killing one of Scratch's warlocks. We see a, a flank here by Overdose and Wings, um, sort of a side battle. But now uh, we also have Father Xmas coming in with his hair on guards from the west putting on pressure and uh, sort of bottling up these units here. Um, I don't see any killing. Okay, there we go. And Father Xmas wasting some heals on healing Thrall. That's a questionable decision. Um, but it does vet the Heron card. Captured. It does so do it, kill, it, it but can, uh, it can be useful. Yeah. For maybe Heron Guard heroes. But yeah, if you only have the single heal, that can be a, a late game disaster. Flag you see uh, Overdose uh, sort of Flag lost. killing this, Flag this defensive captured. force here. Flag Middle is, uh, this is going to be a big swing for, well, I guess it, it just was. I, it, we were originally at 74, 74, 
about. Now it's down to 50, so there was a big swing somewhere. Flag lost. Yeah, it could have been Father Xmas coming from this side, killing a bunch of Thrall. Uh, wings with a massive shot on Meerkat's uh, archers going to blow up most of them. Uh, I don't think this fireball is going to quite get to kill Meerkat's other group of archers. So, uh, so that the was the downside with the with Meerkat with the strategy we had Meerkat having to run. Uh, maybe too many thrall, too many too many units for for someone that new to have to run. Yeah, I will just, give I mean, he, a complete had, transparency and say that I told um, Spy the Trade um, Meerkat ultimately ended up having to maybe do more than he's uh, bit off to, to chew. I think yeah, if we had Spy he, running more of those units, I, th I think that could have been a, a difference, but, but well, that's hard. Spy gave himself 7%. So what are you going to do? He gave himself probably just a Warlock. Uh, meanwhile, um, yeah, the pink team is completely boxed in. And uh, I don't know if there's much they can do. You know, they're going to try and move out for 30 seconds. But, uh, ooh, there's a little friendly fire from scratch. That wasn't nice. Um, well, that was actually a block from Walter White, if you saw but. Oh, no, I'm, I'm talking about this uh, Warlock. Yeah, no, here. that's what I'm talking about, too. Actually, Walter White stepped in front of it to make sure that it was a friendly fire impact. Yeah, I don't know about that, man. But um, yeah, well, it was either think... that or, like, 10 seconds before that it happened. <laughs> but it also, like, killed 50% of your guys' units. So you don't get damage, but sometimes you can place a unit in front of the enemy's projectile and basically kill, make them kill themselves. If they have warlocks, that's a, a huge thing you can do to really help your team is send one unit just to block, just to block the shot. Yeah, and actually this game is a lot closer than it should have been. Um, or at least, yeah, I think, uh, game. yeah, that's about it. Okay, so yeah, I mean, that was an interesting game. Um, again, kind of strange how Spy only gave himself 7%. Glassjaw, again, you know, given, what, 14 15%, something like that. Meerkat, 25%. Um, I think Father Xmas had a great push from the, uh, what would this be, the western side with his hair on guards. Um, you know, Wings, Cryptos, Scratch, they did a good job containing the middle. Overdose, he, he looped around the side. Um, and, uh, yeah, I mean, uh, I think I think Team Spy might have benefited from running at least some small forces to the flanks and then just backing up if necessary. But, um, yeah, it wasn't meant to be. And with that, we have the last game. Again, this is a light a light map, so I think we just did we just did like three light maps in a row here. Um, maybe some bad map choices or a bad mix of games from Overdose. Maybe he needs to fix that so that there's maybe some more dark maps in the weeks ahead. Uh, but here we go. This is Baron's Territories. So we have Team Creeping Death with Crypto, Scratch, Spy, Bridgestone, and Walter White going up against Prestige Worldwide, Glassjaw, Father Xmas, Overdose Wings, and Meerkat. It'll be interesting to see both of these captains' choice. Lately, I've been... I've been really trusting Glassjaw's opinion, so... Um, it'll be interesting to see how he fares against uh, such a seasoned player as Cryptos. Yeah, I think both of them make, uh, you know, aggressive trades. And, um, you know, they don't like to sort of draw out games. They would rather just kind of get it over with, I think. And um, so it's it's going to likely turn into a slugfest type game. And... Uh, 
you know, with the, those are always the most exciting to see, and uh, I expect some good things from this game. So hopefully, okay, so we see Glassjaw, perhaps a bit of a faster trade, um, deciding to give all, uh, all of these warriors to Father Xmas. That's quite a huge group of guys. Unless he has a plan. And maybe he does have a plan, who knows. Um, but what we see so far is a, a very warrior-dependent army coupled with some artillery. Probably, I want to You say seem like you, you don't you're not sure. I want to say that uh, Glassjaw might have maxed dwarves, as there are six of them. And um, yeah, who knows? Um, Kryptos, on the other hand, maximum warriors. And, um, you know, actually, these are pretty identical trades. Um, you know, the maximum warriors probably the max, maximum Stygian Knights, one less dwarf I see, maybe a couple more archers, I don't know. But um, yeah, very similar trades. Again, Based on your hesitance, uh, is there anything you would have maybe considered the teams to have considered? Uh, I mean, honestly, I don't even know the unit trade on this map. I only chose it because... Um, you know, it, it just looked like yeah. an interesting map. I think we've played it in a couple of other reg tournaments. Um, and so, you know, I'm just glad that I wasn't chosen as a captain for this game. Um, so, yeah, I mean, I, I don't I don't really have any criticisms of uh, or I don't have anything to criticize from either of these two captains. I will say personally, I I always feel like um, territories is one of my worst at the, one of the maps that I hate to captain the most. It seems like there's a lot more to think about. I, I guess it's similar to King of the Map in that way, you know, because same flags and everything. But it's just it's there are so many fronts, but you're. You're also thinking about end game. Flag. So like on King of the Map, you're at least thinking about, all right, let's hold these flags. And and like you can kind of reduce it so you could think like, okay, so territories is like a wider spread, like think later game. Uh, you can follow similar strategies to maybe King of the Map if you have a strategy for that. And then, oh, I don't have a strategy for that. Let's think about what, like maybe flag rally or something like that, but... But but each of these game types requires kind of a, a thought process, and uh, I don't know. In these casual tournaments, uh, these territories games are are always very stressful. I feel like. Yeah, thought process and casual games don't mix well. So um, yeah, just keep that in mind. You know, this is again the casuals only tournament, so it's important to not be brain dead, but at the same Flag time. Captured. You know, you don't want to put too much thought into these things. So, so we have yet to see Flag any major captured. engagements, though it seems like uh, Glassjaw and Walter White might be mixing it up in the middle. Uh, nope, they appear to be backing off. Um, a huge southern force. Who is this? Overdose, Wings, Father Xmas. And, uh, yeah, that's it. So... A three-person southern force going up against Kryptos and Bridgestone. I think they could be pushing this. Um, who is this? Scratch and Spy, the dynamic duo, again, going north with no resistance. There's no Flag yellow captured. presence here whatsoever. So um, it'll be interesting to see if they continue on to tag some of these flags. Or if they try and surround Glassjaw. I'll be interested to see. It looks like everything's on the south southern fight. 
Yeah, we see Father Xmas being very aggressive Flag with the warriors. Um, Bridgestone, he is, he stopped. Um, just you know, instead of helping his teammates, he has stopped moving, and is instead, you know, shooting at a couple of Flag goals over capture. here. Um, you know, basically leaving Father Xmas and Overdose to fend for themselves. Which is interesting if you look at uh, the overhead map, you can see black has uh, yellow completely contained. Uh, I think uh, Walter had made a choice, me, uh, that, okay, I, I, I think you guys have this, so fall back. It look like self needs more help, but I think that could be a critical error, potentially. We, we don't know. Yeah, um, Cryptos and, and uh, Bridgestone do not have any dwarves, uh, so I think that force is going to fall. I was criticizing Wings, rather, not Bridgestone, because Bridgestone is on the other team, um, for just standing there Flag earlier, uh, just to correct that. Flag but at the same time, it seems like Glassjaw is on the run Flag here. You know, spy but earlier in the scratch. game, Spy Scratch and My Force Mid uh, had had that force completely surrounded and could probably just eat them up. Instead, Walter thought, "Okay, uh, Scratch and Spy have it," so he moved south to try to help. And I think that it allows enough maneuverability to where uh, that northern force of uh, Glassjaw's team gets away from any anything well, and all of a sudden yeah they're able to in... link up with uh, glass jaw or sorry um meerkat and wings who have some units on this eastern flag um, so instead of just taking them out uh walter white falls back to try to help uh bridgestone and cryptos who seem to have having tr have been having trouble Flag. but then everyone's having trouble I accept uh, Team Glassjaw, it seems. Um, but yeah, so I, I mean, despite Glassjaw being able to sort of retreat back into a, sort of a, a safer area, um, Scratch and Spy still have a huge archer advantage, so it's going to be tough for them to mount any kind of uh, counteroffensive. And, and to that end, I don't really know why. Okay, yeah, they are starting to pull back. Um, and the main... The main uh, Glassjaw army is sort of trying to group up with, with this stranded Flag bunch. Captured. And I think, Walter, you're trying to link up with Scratch and Spy to envelop Flag. this group of units. No, originally it's... we had them enveloped, and it was so enveloped that it just seemed like um, Scratch and Spy had way too many units, Flag. whereas Flag. south with Bridgestone... And uh, the the way that uh, Cryptos's units seemed to be just dying, uh, it seemed like they needed more help. So I I retreated, hoping instead of just like killing North and then you know facing South, I just faced South. But that allowed enough space that uh, the yellow team was able to escape. And uh, and yeah, then then it just became a, a dominance thing for for yellow yellow was able to kind of come back around i don't know what happened south that was a, a very poor play by cryptos and uh, and bridge like so much so that even with support they couldn't do anything <laughs> well i mean they were getting rushed yeah but it was to the point that it's yeah like it's uh it's it's interesting just to look at the overhead map of this one of of how the units were distributed so well, I, mean, I, I still think that ultimately now in retrospect i would just say okay scratch spy and me close in kill north and then we can just face south that's probably a better strategic decision but yeah maybe i mean i as much as I hate Cryptos, I wouldn't really pin this one on him or Bridgestone. I think that, um, you know, it was it was three on two. They they couldn't really do much. So I mean, that 
you know they 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 did what they could but uh yeah i don't know but yeah it, it seems you know with 49 percent to 17 percent um there's a huge advantage for team glassjaw right now and um i think it really just comes down to hunting down the few remaining soldiers uh to close out this game as overdose says more or less mop-up duty you bastard. <laughs> yeah, well, I mean... I mean, it is. Yeah, no, for sure. Flag lost. But yeah, that was one of those games that, like... I don't know. You know, you, you always know how good Five minutes remaining. the players are around you by sort of if you win or lose. A lot of the time, but you know, I, I trust every single one of the players on my team, and um, and they, yeah, that was just uh, a rough situation. So, so are are you are you pinning the loss then on Spy and Scratch? No, I'm pinning the loss kind of on myself because I was sort of the pinpoint in the middle. Uh, if you watched earlier, so you're you're saying that you should have. You should have continued should. north with Scratch and Spy, then rotating And south. then taken out all of the, yeah, the northern units, and then backed up. But it, um, the way that it looked is, um, is that... Uh, so up north, there were actually, like, too many units far back that I didn't even think about. But, it, but Kryptos and Bridgestone and in our chat as well were... Uh, were getting kind of overwhelmed and both of them were kind of like semi AFK. So it was like, okay, so I need to come, come down there and help. But, uh, and it seemed like we pretty much had you guys scared up North enough that it might help, but it wasn't, it wasn't close. So in, in general, we should have just done sweep up duty and then, back around i think but north north was really just one guy it was it was glass no it was, it was spy oh well no i know oh it was on your team yeah so why do why do you need three guys to take down i mean is glass that that was the thing so that was also the thing is that i thought that scratch and spy would have it but i was in the middle as like how how we could block off everything so there was a critical point in that game if you look back, that we almost had like a C pattern around his units. So just, we should have just like closed in and killed them all and then moved on. But at that point was when Kryptos and Bridgestone were having so much trouble south that I, and I could, I, I think in game, I, I didn't feel like I, I saw enough to know that I had the rest of your units cut off. And so I, I I pin the the blame I feel like on me. It just it felt like for like middle's position was lost was the crucial call, and I made the wrong one. So well, Glass Glassjaw says will executed guys. Um, he's obviously happy, even though I don't know if he really did anything that game. Flag. He capped well. He's a good cap. He picked the right units. Yeah, I guess so. Uh, I'm trying to track down who this last Kryptos Black unit is. I don't know. Maybe someone here. There's a warrior there. Yeah, this might be the last one. So it maybe it might be Overdose who gets the. Uh, Flag the coup de grace, so to speak. Flag contested. Team eliminated. I'm go. frustrated about that game, but yeah, no, it was a GG, and and to see Mr. Father Xmas get another point. But now it's uh, everyone needs to be concerned about these Xmas wings and overdose characters. 
Yeah, I mean, I, I would say that it, and when it comes to Father Xmas and points, it's really important to focus on those free-for-all games because those are, I, I think, a bit more impactful in regards to preventing him you know, from getting too many lives. One for everyone to gain uh, points. You know, the, you know, the yeah. two-team games, for lack of a better, you know, they're more or less a coin flip. Um, so, you know, if, if we can keep Father Xmas to 50-50, I think that's that's okay. But as far as the free-for-all games, that's where he's going to lose the most if we if we come together and uh, try and prevent him from from surviving. But um, well, I need to gain a few more lives. Uh, uh, unfortunately, this last weekend was was a rough one. So yes, and we are past the point where uh, players gain lives. Now it's just downhill. Uh, let me see the uh, the results for week three, Saturday. Uh, yeah, here. That's why I asked my nephew to be born this last weekend. No. I mean, on Glassjaw's son's birthday. Yeah. Um, so are, are you implying that you and Glassjaw are brothers and that his son is actually your nephew? Or... I think that's the implication, but it's not true. <laughs> Oh, it okay. just happened to to work out that way. <laughs> All right. Well, anyway, um, so we see a whole long list of dead people, but um, Father Xmas with eleven lives, Overdose with nine, Glassjaw with seven, Wings and Walter White with eight, and Cronjack just barely hanging on with one life. Again, we were going to repeat the uh, the same format on Sunday, and so if any of these players play on Sunday and they end up with a better score, I would be using the higher of the two scores moving into week four. Um, but those those results... It would be, be fun reviewed. if, like, in a spin-off series, we could do, like, a like comeback. You know, like, whoever wins, but then it's, you know, like, Survivor. <laughs> like, oh, but all of a sudden, these people came back to life. Boom! <laughs> you know? But we will see. You know, I don't think that that's necessarily the way we want to do things. But but it, it's it's silly. Yeah, maybe. I mean, people coming back from the dead, that's just fairy tales and black magic and a bunch of nonsense. If that's you ask true. Me. Once you're dead, you're dead. Um, anyway, so what? I, thank you for uh, joining us, Walter, for this uh, group of games. I'm sure it won't be the last time. And uh, hopefully we can get into some of the week three Sunday games at a future date. But uh, until then, uh, you know, uh, thanks for joining us and uh, we hope to see you next time.